Are you worried that this year will be just like the last couple years? Today, I want to speak life, and I want to tell you that this year is full of new beginnings. Welcome to Season 9 of We're Going There. It's about time, because we're going there. Hi, friends. Welcome back to a brand new season and a brand new year of We're Going There. I'm your host, Bianca wattis Oltoff, and if you are anything like me, you might hold on to new beginnings and new years with potential and promise. But what happens when we think things will change and they don't? If you've wanted something to change and no matter what you said or you did or prayed that would change and it didn't, it can feel wildly disillusioning. I know, and I've been there before. And in fact, if I'm completely honest with you, there's been this area in my life that I've been praying for, well, for years. There has to be a moment though, when we realize that there's a line of demarcation that's needed. Well, what does that mean? We have to get to a place mentally, a place of choosing to say, oh, no, 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 this is my new beginning. Writer Rochelle Goodrich says this, the direction you choose to face determines whether you were standing at the end or the beginning of a road. When I read that, I was like, wait a minute, it's just a matter of orientation and whether or not we're able to do an about face. So listen, listen, I'm walking away after reading that quote and saying, wait, the choice is ours. The story we are writing is controlled by the one who holds the pen. Now, Philippians tells us that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith, but what I want us to step into is the co-writing of our life. Now, of course, faith is integral to that, but I want us to do some evaluations and ask ourselves some great questions to help us literally frame how to have a fresh start in a new beginning. In fact, this entire season, we are tackling this topic of new beginnings, and I don't want this to be linear or from one perspective. No way. Uh Uh-uh. I want different people from different backgrounds giving their learnings, their life lessons, and how to start again with a new beginning. From Food Network star and chef Artie Sakara to award-winning gospel singer Anthony Evans Jr., from straight-up truth-talking Real Talk Kim to the eye-opening questions from counselor and coach Mike Foster, whoo, gird your loins, friends. This season, I want to reinforce that you indeed can have a new beginning. It doesn't matter what your background, it doesn't matter what 2023 or 2022 had. No, no, no. You can have a new beginning. But before I bring on guests, I wanted you and I, podcast listener and friend, to have some real talk. Before we go and launch into this season and we listen to how all these other people did new beginnings or experienced new beginnings, I want us to have some real conversations. We love the idea of new beginnings. But what we may not realize is that for beginnings to have successful endings, we need to evaluate who we are, how we are, and what excuses have crept into our life that have stopped us from finishing well. To know the good of our goodbyes, we need to evaluate and assess before we begin to build. As you step into this new beginning, at the very least, it's the beginning of a new year, right, friend? You have to ask yourself this question, who am I? Okay, so let me tell you where we're going. I'm gonna ask you these three questions because in order for us to have really successful new beginnings, we have to do some investigative work. This question, who am I, is gonna take a little bit of work. Now, I'm very aware that many of you listen while in traffic or on the treadmill or cooking in your kitchen or on a long walk. So you might not be able to pull out your journal or your pen, but please listen to me. In order for us to really step into our new, we need to know what we're working with. This question of who am I is really layered and nuanced. I'm not asking about your ethnicity or your family of origin. I'm asking, what do you possess that makes you uniquely you? You might not know where to begin. And I get it. It's a daunting question. But when you do have time for your journal and you can pull out a pen, here are some questions that will help you ask yourself to get around this idea of who am I. Questions like, what are my abilities? What are my spiritual gifts? What are the benefits of my personality? What are the liabilities of my personality? That's a good one. That's a good one. What skills or talents make me different or unique? And lastly, what are the areas in my life that I need to work on that I'm not aware I need to work on? And yes, you might have to enlist the help of some of your friends to make sure that you're being honest and aware of some downfalls. Now, once you've answered these questions, to help you frame the big question of who am I, I want to journal and process this next question. So question number one is, who am I? 
Question number two is, where am I? Again, I'm not asking for your geography, your zip code, or a physical location. I'm asking, where are you at this point in your life and what have you learned? To make this very specific, I want it to be from the last year. And the reason why is if we open this up to longer periods of time, it's going to get incredibly overwhelming. For right now, answer these questions to help address the larger question of where am I? Am I in a job or a community that I love? Am I doing or moving towards a goal that I have and who I want to be? What have I learned in the last year about my family, my community, and myself? Lastly, how is my relationship with God? These questions are not geographical in any way, shape, or means, but it shows you emotionally where you are and allows you to see and assess if that is where you want to be. In this quest of your new beginning, you need to know who you are, where you are, and lastly, what you have. I'll ask this third question more directly, but let me give a little caveat. In my last book, Grit Don't Quit, I talk about how resilient people have the ability to pivot. You have to work with what you have. Work with what you got, baby, okay? Because our brains are wired for a negativity bias. Now, for more on this research, check out my book, Grit Don't Quit. But our brains automatically go to what's wrong, what doesn't work, or what we don't have. So this final question of stepping into our new beginning is this. What do I have? Oh, this is key, friends. Listen, listen, please hear me. I don't care if you rent your apartment, lease your car, have credit card debt, and owe your family money. That doesn't mean you don't have anything to work with. Now, I need to do a gentle caveat here. I really, really, really want you to get your finances in order and encourage you to listen to the Father South Orange County YouTube series that we did a few weeks ago entitled How to Be Rich. You can check it out. It's free 99, but it'll really help you get your finances in track. But I digress. What I want you to do is take an evaluation of what you have or who you have access to. As you think about this what do I have question? Here are some questions to help you see what assets you actually possess. Questions like this. How much do I have saved or invested? What skills or talents do I have that someone would pay for? What free resources do I have that can help enrich or encourage my life? <clears throat> We're going there podcast. You're welcome, friends. And lastly, who do I know that can help me or coach me? If you're anything like me, you might be a little neurotic with your water, and you probably don't trust tap water. That's why you have to check out AquaTrue. AquaTrue purifiers use a four-stage reverse osmosis purification process, and their countertop purifiers work with no installation or plumbing. That was my favorite part. The filters are affordable and long-lasting, so you don't have to change them every two to three months like the other ones. Just one set of filters from their classic purifier makes the equivalent of 4,500 bottles of water. So basically, you're saving the environment from tons of plastic waste, and you get to drink fantastic water. I got mine delivered straight to my house, and it was easy to set up. AquaTrue comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee and even makes for a great gift. I know, because I got one for my sister. Today, my listeners receive 20% off of any AquaTrue purifier. Just go to AquaTrue.com. That's A-Q-U-A-T-R-U.com, and enter the code WGT at checkout. That's 20% off of any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue.com and use the promo code WGT. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. As we head into the new year, I want us to have an honest conversation about some things that can help our mental health. Now, if you know me, I'm an ardent supporter of therapy and theology. And maybe you're ready to take a next step in counseling or therapy. Whether you've been in therapy or not, I think it's a good time to process emotions and learn how to develop personal emotional health. The good thing about BetterHelp is that it's completely online. So maybe you are looking for something convenient or flexible or suited to your schedule. If you're thinking about counseling or therapy or just need someone to talk to about a situation to process your emotions, I really recommend BetterHelp.com. You can go to BetterHelp.com slash going there and get 10% off your first month of counseling. That's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash going there. Why Solomon said in Proverbs 15 22, plans go wrong with too few counselors. Many counselors bring success. Too often, people fail to achieve their dreams or their new beginnings because they're too proud to look to others for help. 
You may need to recruit a personal brain trust or advisors to help you achieve this new beginning or reach this new dream. But if you find yourself after these three questions ready to move on and step into a new beginning, let me remind you that our God is a God of second chances and fresh starts. I want to make sure that I am peppering in a bunch of scriptures so that you know I am not just making this up, but we serve a God of new beginnings, so much so that he gives us a new day every day. With every rising of the sun and setting of the moon, God gives us a new beginning. But some of the biggest barriers to our own success is our own excuses. God has a lot to say about excuses. And to make sure that you know I'm not making this up, I will give you some verses that will combat some of our excuses. Let's just take a look at four of the most common excuses that we make when we don't want to move forward with a new beginning. I don't have what it takes to go after my dream. Many people in the Bible tried this same excuse, friend, including the greats like Moses, Jeremiah, and Gideon. But God reminded each one of them that he was with them as they were fulfilling their calling, what God has called them to in their lives. And God's answer to our insecurity is to remind us that we are not alone. So this excuse, I don't have what it takes to go after my dream. Guess what? That's contrary to what the Bible says about you and what God thinks about you. One of the characters that used this excuse very, very directly was a character by the name of Gideon. And in Judges 6, 12, an angel appears to him and says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. That's a good truth to remember the next time that you feel overwhelmed and you don't want to step into your new beginning. Let me speak those words over you. God is with you, my friend, mighty warrior. You're not weak and feeble. You are well abled. Excuse number two, I have failed in the past. The good news is you're not alone. Every human who's ever existed, well, other than Jesus. So every human that's ever existed other than Jesus has failed. God wants to tell you exactly what he told Isaiah. He says this in Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Forget what has happened before and don't think about the past. Look at the new thing I'm going to do. It's already happening. Don't you see it? So it doesn't matter if you failed in the past. Your past is not your present and your past is not your future. You don't have to worry about what's happened before. We serve a God of new beginnings. Excuse number three. There are things I can't control. The truth is you can't control most of what happens in life and that's okay. Control what you can and leave the rest up to God. That doesn't mean that you're helpless. No, it means that you give God everything that you cannot control. Control what you can and give the rest to God. Proverbs 24, 10 says, don't give up and be helpless in times of trouble. Excuse number four, I don't know what the future holds. You'll never know what the future holds. But what I'm begging you is to look at the one who holds the future. Oh, gosh, I know that sounds cliche and it's rhymy and it's a sticky statement, but it works because it's true. You may not know the future, but you know who holds the future, and that's God. Ecclesiastes 11.4 says, Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they'll never harvest. And listen, those aren't words just for horticulturalists. Those aren't words just for farmers. Those are words for people who are ready to go out and are so close to giving up on their God dream because they're not seeing what they expect to see or they're waiting for the perfect moment, the perfect weather, the perfect cloud. It's not going to work on like that. You can't wait for perfect success or you're never going to step into success. You're never going to start new if you're waiting for everything to come together. You're waiting so that you could see the future. You're only going to see the future when you step into it. So in order for us to have a new beginning, do the work of asking yourself these three questions. Who am I? Where am I? And what do I have? Then address your excuses and put them on a shelf. At the end of the day, if you want a new beginning, you have to step out in faith and believe that it's possible. And remember, God isn't moved by our complaints. He's moved by our faith. Jesus said in Matthew 9, 29, according to your faith, let it be done to you. You know you're acting in faith when you're attempting to do something that can't be done in your own power. So I give you the words that Jesus spoke in the New Testament. According to your faith, let it be done. 
Friends, it's time we have faith for new beginnings. As we start this new year, let's step out with faith and boldly declare, God, bring on the new. With your help, I'm putting aside excuses and I'm choosing to believe that nothing, nothing is impossible for you, even new beginnings. All right, friends, did I whet your appetite for more? I hope so, because this season is coming in hot and new. And to keep things in the vein of new, we're starting something new this season. In fact, this season is kicking off next Monday with a five-day series addressing diet culture, weight loss, and how we can begin to feed our soul. Oh, we definitely go there. We talk about eating disorders, disordered eating, the dysfunction of diet culture, and how to really step into something new. I hope you've subscribed to this podcast so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. And I really love seeing and hearing where you're listening and watching from. Will you consider tagging me at Bianca Oltoff and let me know what you're learning? I love sharing those stories online and it encourages others to do the same and to tune in. Well, friends, happy new beginnings. Cheers to a new year. I can't wait to see what this season holds. 